Hey guys, welcome out to the range. Today I wanted to cover something that is near and dear to my heart. Um, the talking points that are often used when you're talking about short barreled rifles is terminal ballistics. Now, even though this is a 13.7 drilled pin and welded out to 16 and an eighth, it is still technically a short barrel. It is, it is a short barreled legal rifle, but 13.7 is a short barrel. And why I choose this build as my go-to EDC rifle is because it is short enough, light enough, and capable enough to put holes in people and modify behavior. What I mean by that is, I really wish I could remember what the conversation was. I want to say it was, um, I want to say it was Tim Harmson, and he was, it was a podcast that he did with a couple of guys not too long ago, and they were talking about, yeah, yeah, it was, it was the, the, video about the 556 five, round potentially going away and uh, one of the guys made a comment about the deadliest round that, that the United States military has ever fielded was 22 long rifle and I was like yes finally somebody said it and I forget who if it, if it wasn't all of them but someone said putting holes in places where holes don't belong ultimately wins the fight Duh! And I mean that like in a complimentary fashion to these gentlemen. That's what I've been preaching for years, which is why I say to people all the time, guys, seven and a half is a perfectly valid uh, AR-15 setup for defensive purposes. Because a seven and a half does what a 22 long rifle can't. Let me explain what I mean by that. Many, many years ago, a friend of mine contacts me and he goes, Hey man, you need to get into this forum. This is, guys, this is before the days of, of, of like truly the interwebs as we now know it. <sighs> Boy, the spiders are after me today. And uh, he says to me, hey, you need to get into this forum and you need to defend your article. Someone apparently in like ARFCOM or M4Carbine.net, which I forget which one it was, they'd, they'd gotten my, my latest article that I'd printed, uh, that, I'd, that, that I'd gone to print in a magazine, I forget which, I want to say it was SWAT magazine. And I was talking about seven and a half and about how capable they are and that I had busted body armor at 75 yards with M193 and they were calling me a liar. Uh, um, and let me be clear, um, 3A armor, 2A, 2, 3A, those three are soft armor. Level three, level four are hard plates, but 3A armor is soft and I was busting 3A armor with M193 with a seven and a half like nobody's business from 75 yards, which is about from here to the, to the tree line out there, which is that. And what I found was that um, I briefly looked at what was there and I went, oh, not even touching this, not even touching this. And I just stayed out of it. Because look, you don't step into somebody else's house and try to defend yourself. You're on their turf. You're not gonna win that fight, go away, which is what I did. So. What I say to people is, it is so nice to finally start seeing the somebodies of the world saying the things that I've been saying for well, well over a decade, which is, if you put holes in places where holes don't belong, you will modify that fight and or end that fight immediately. Um, immediately, the fight will end. It may end only temporarily or it may end permanently. But the point is, You've modified that fight by putting holes where they don't belong. And this rifle has the ability to put holes in stuff where they don't belong from 400 yards because I was out there the other day and I nailed a target, a man-sized target, in the chest from a hasty prone position, no real stability using standard run-of-the-mill M193. One, uh, one, two, three, four, and I think the fifth one was in the middle. And this is in high wind, okay? In high wind, with a 13.7 inch barrel, I hit the target five times in a row. And that's when I said, oh, we're good. So we're good. Because I was testing this rifle. I had just built the gun, was running some tests with it. What is it really capable of doing? Am I gonna lose something? And what I'd done was I'd taken a massive white cardboard box and I'd put it right over my torso target because I needed to make sure that these rounds weren't keyholing. One more time, because of the myths. The myths that, oh yeah, short-barreled rifles, the rounds are gonna keyhole when they get there. Well, not only were they not keyholing, 
Every single round was a perfect five millimeter hole in that cardboard box. And then of course it dinged onto the target behind it. So I said, then we're good to go because my focus is not minute of angle, it's minute of body. Um, MOB, not MOA. So behavior modification is what you're after and short barreled rifles will absolutely get it done. And remember guys, anything other than a 20 inch barrel is a short barreled rifle. Even the, the 16 inch carbines, which are legal, those are still technically short barreled rifles. Of course, I just blew somebody's mind with that. I thank you guys for your sling orders. I thank you guys for your upper orders. You've been keeping food on the table for my family. I thank you for that, it means a great deal. Uh, if you wanna support Tier 1 Citizen with, with just a donation, um, and when I say just a donation, as in like not buy something, you can go to tier1citizen.com, scroll up on the screen a little bit, click on the logo of Chuckles, and run that slider as high as you want. I thank you so much for your support. God bless you all. Get those guns out in practice. Have a good one.